Okay then, today I'm going to be showing you several different things using a tool within Retrobat known as BatGUI. Now, I've covered several of these guys, but these are going back to 2023, and let's face it, Retrobat, especially BatGUI, has had major updates since those days of 2023. So what we're going to do first of all then, is check out Retrobat GUI and how to actually access this. So I'm going to go to my Retrobat shortcut, right click on it, open file location and at the top just here you should find backgui.executable what i'm going to do is make a shortcut of this on my desktop so it's easier to get to if i right click on backgui if i then go down to show more options send to desktop create shortcut in there we go we can easily access this now no problem so let's open up backgui Okay then, so this is Batch UI, and this is admittedly going to look a bit confusing to some people, so let's start from scratch. We're going to go to Retrobat Innie to begin with, if I just left click on this one. Now this is going to open up the Retrobat Innie editor, and we can do several different things from here. Now under Retrobat just here, where my cursor is, it will say at boot. Now we can actually use this to boot up Retrobat once you power your computer on. All we need to do to do this is just left click at boot, and we're going to go down to launch Retrobat by registry. Once that's selected, what I'm going to do next is make sure this is saved. Now I can go to save or I can go to save and run Retrobat. For this, I'm going to just go to save. Save config, yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do next then is get my camera out and I'm going to reboot the computer so you can see this boots up once we boot up the computer. Okay, so I just restarted my computer and I've got the password system. Now, if you don't have a password, then you should boot straight into Retrobat. But I'm going to enter my password now. Okay, as you can see, that booted directly into Retrobat. Now, through Bat GUI or Retrobat in the editor, what I'm going to do is go to App Boot and I'm going to put Don't Launch Retrobat. Next up then, we're going to take a look at how to get window mode working within Retrobat. Now, what we're going to see under Emulation Station is full screen, full screen borderless. Under here, we got window X size and we also got window Y size. Now, first of all, I'm going to change the X size of this. Now, I'm going to put this one down to 720 and I'm randomly under Y size going to type in 210. If I then uncheck full screen and full screen borderless, Save and run Retrobat, and yes. In there we go. We can now see that we got a window mode, but this is a little bit strange to look at. So if I just close out, we're going to make this window mode a little bit more presentable so we can actually see what we're doing here. If I go to X size, I'm going to type in 1080. Under Y size, I'm going to type in 720. And again, go to save and run Retrobat and save config, yes. And there we go, we now got Retrobat in a window mode which we can actually see what we're doing. So that one's fairly simple to set up. Okay, we can also change our splash screen video. So for example, under splash screen file name, I've got my different opening videos just there. I call these intro videos. If I choose the second one down, and I'm going to make sure random video is unchecked for this. If I then go to save and run Retrobat, and again save config, yes. If I change this one to the first option here, intro black, and save and run again, yes. And as you can see, Retrobat then opens using a specific intro video or splash screen video. And just remember to uncheck random video, otherwise this isn't going to work. And under interface mode, we can actually change this to open in kiosk mode or kids mode. If I select kid mode, and again, always make sure you save everything you're doing and go to yes. And there we go, so we're in kids mode and frankly this is pointless, there's nothing here I can do. So I'm going to close out and put interface mode back to normal mode and make sure to save that. 
and yes. Okay, now let's just say, for example, you've messed around with Batch UI and you can't open up RetroBat for whatever reason. If I just close out of Batch UI and I go to my RetroBat shortcut, right click, open file location, you should find here a file saying RetroBat.ini. If I delete this one, now if I go to open up Batch UI again, it's not going to let us do anything because I've just deleted that file. So what we need to do then, we need to open up RetroBat and this is going to generate one of those files for us again. So if I quit out with RetroBat, and as we can see, I've now got RetroBat in here and that's been generated again because I've just opened up RetroBat. Look, we're going to go back to Batch UI. And next up, we got SDL library. Now, just make sure you're left clicking on the actual icons themselves. And just here, if you've got any issues with your gamepad, if we just drop this down, we can use different versions of the software which is support in particular joypads or controllers. And again, just like everything else so far, just make sure to save your settings. Now we've got an option here known as CHD Manager. What this is going to do is convert our bin and queue files into CHD format. Normally in my tutorial videos, I use a separate program, but we can actually use this within Bat GUI. Now on my desktop, I've got some PlayStation 1 games and these are in bin and queue format. Now what I'm going to do is actually convert these bin and queue files into CHD. So rather than having loads of the same file over and over again, we're going to compress everything into one single CHD file and that's also going to save you room too. So under the first option here, convert ISO or Q to CHD, we're going to go to source ISO, select. Now on my desktop, I've got a particular folder. This is PS1 and I've got a couple of PlayStation games in here. All I need to do is go to say Raiden Project. I'm going to double left click on the Q file. And now as we can see, this is going to convert into CHD into that same folder for me. If I hit convert to CHD, that's going to bring up a terminal. Just let this do its thing. Now if I close out and I go into my PS1 folder, into my Raiden folder, as we can see, we've now got a CHD file and that's totally fine to use now. Check out the size here, 15.5 megabyte. The original is 57.1 megabyte. So I've saved myself quite a fair amount of space just there. And I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to go to CHD manager, source ISO. And this time I'm going to convert my Dino Crisis game. Dino Crisis Q. And then once again, we're going to convert to CHD. Okay, cool. And on the right hand side just here, it's going to tell you the systems within RetroBat which actually supports that CHD format. So we got everything here from the 3DO to the PS2 to the PS1, Dreamcast, Sega CD and Saturn. What we're going to do then is actually drag and drop those CHD files into RetroBat because as we know, these are on my desktop. If I go inside Dino Crisis, now that I've got the CHD file, I no longer need the Q and bin files. I can simply delete these. And the same with Raiden. I'm going to delete the Q and bin. So I'm just left with the CHD. Now I'm going to drag and drop these into RetroBat. So if I go into my ROMs folder and look for PSX. And I'm going to drag Raiden inside. And I'm also going to drag my Dino Crisis CHD inside. If I open up RetroBat. And I'm just going to search for PlayStation. And here we go. And here's both of my games. Excellent stuff. If I open up Raiden Project. And as you can see, that's working absolutely fine. Now, it's quite likely somebody out there is going to ask me which theme I'm using here. If I go to main menu, user interface settings, theme set, this theme is actually Hypermax plus Pixen. And the way to get this theme is very simple. Just go down to updates and downloads, themes, 
and you can then choose that theme from this list just download it and install it very easy stuff look we're going to head back in batch ui this time i'm going to show you how to have retrobat detect roms from different locations so what i'm going to do on the left hand side i'm going to drag until i get the sega and i'm going to go to mega drive and this is going to open up lots of different details for Mega Drive for this example. Now, under ROMs path, it's currently set at default, which is Retrobat, ROMs, and the Mega Drive folder. I've actually got an MD folder on my desktop. If I just minimize this, as we can see, MD, and here's my Mega Drive games. If I go to ROMs path and just left click on those three dots, I'm going to choose desktop, and here's my MD folder. If I left click that and go to OK, that's now set to read the Mega Drive ROMs from my desktop itself. So if I open up Retrobat, I should now see Mega Drive appear. And here is Mega Drive. And as we can see, this is my Mega Drive games, which are actually on my desktop rather than being in the default ROMs location, which Retrobat gives you. And here we go, working perfectly from my desktop location. Okay, next up, and finally, we're going to go to BIOS Checker. If I click on this, what this is going to do is scan all of the different BIOS files that we've actually got stored on the computer. If I go to scan, as we can see, after I've hit scan, on OK just here, we've got all these ticks and that means I've got the correct BIOS files for these particular systems. Now, if you don't have the correct BIOS, it's going to give you a red cross. And those with a red cross is also going to indicate the name of the BIOS file you need. So it's very simple to work this out nowadays in Retrobat. And that's it for today's Bat GUI, guys. So hopefully I've cleared up a hell of a lot in that little video. And like I said at the start of the video, it's been since 2023 since I last took a look at Bat GUI and uploaded anything for it. But it's come to a very good point nowadays and it's actually very useful. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, check out my playlist in the comments section. I've covered Retrobat a hell of a lot in the past and I've got plenty of setup guides there for Retrobat and other useful hints and tips videos like this one today. Anyways, if you enjoyed today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro content here on my channel, just Jamie. Again, thanks for watching and until next time, stay retro.